I was doing that thing where were you here whenever we were watching that Chinese TikToker like guessing what all like the appliances were? What is this? Potato potato. It's a longan. Longan. I was joking like that. You know, they showed me this brown switch and I was just like, MX Brown. <laughs> but it's actually coffee top. <laughs> Okay, today we're gonna be building Aganeko Go Keyboard Kit. This is going to be an in stock drop starting at $80 for the Frosted Clear PC and then $85 for the Soft Touch Black PC. It uses injected PC and then it's powered by ZMK, so that makes it you can enjoy it wirelessly. There is a battery. This is a 60% layout. It is an O ring gasket mounted board. Uses universal ANSI plate layout, 6 degree typing angle, has RGB underglow. The O ring gasket that they give you is 50A, so pretty soft. Does use daughter board and Molex. In the box, you'll also get cherry clip and stabs, custom silicone feet, a USB cable, a battery battery and then default comes with a FR4 plate does use a hot swap PCB that you can do split a regular backspace and then you can split the right shift pretty much all you need from this would be switches and keycaps it is 6.25 for the hot swap PCB but it does use a universal plate but this is the box that I was sent so it has all the specs on here this is what we're gonna be building Ooh. Stabs, more stabs, even more stabs, Molex, this is empty, 50A, here's the case. Oh, these have been tuned. I'm gonna use the tuned ones. <laughs> the one I got is the Frosted Clear PC, and this one starts at $80. That is a small battery. It's teeny, teeny tiny. It's been taped down as well. O ring gasket keyboard, so the case is one singular piece. It is a 60% keyboard, 6.25 U bottom row with the PCB. Here's the top, nothing too fancy. Here is the side, 6 degree typing angle. Here's the back. So you have these feet, these circular feet. There is actually branding, but you can't really quite see it. It's right here. I don't know if you guys can see that cannon right here. Centered USB port. And then here's the front lip. There's not really much to say about this board. It is $80 and it's meant to be like a traveling wireless keyboard. You can see the four mounting posts on the top and then the four on the bottom for the O-ring. And then here you do have a cutout in the case for the battery, which is very small. Most batteries I've been seeing are like the huge ones but this is just meant to be compact and lightweight so you can travel more easily with it. They were saying that with RGB off the battery fully charged should last about a month without being plugged back in however with RGB on it lasts less than a day so they would recommend not using RGB whenever you're using it wireless. It does use the daughter board Molex. This daughter board part is going to be secure so you don't have to worry about this ripping off but then this one is the easy mate molex here's a plate so universal 60 plate which does support multi layouts i wonder if this means you know in the future different pcb compatibilities perhaps but they do have this universal fr4 plate that comes with the default and then here you have the pcb so this is their wireless pcb 60 percent so for caps lock it is regular caps lock the um, wireless button is actually underneath the caps lock right right there so you can see like that's the switch you can split the backspace split the right shift everything else is set 6.25 view bottom row there is no per key rgb but if you look at the back there is underglow so you see two four six eight ten twelve underglow leds physical reset button right there the o-ring they give you is 50a default but i'm sure if you ever want you can look for the 60 percent o-rings for like either harder or softer duro that's about it i didn't see any foam that comes with it that's interesting yeah it doesn't come with foam connor's computer is in the same room that we sleep in but his thing is that he gets cold easily but he's learned that if I'm sleeping, he has to keep the AC on the entire time. Otherwise, 
I will wake up and I will be mad, okay? Whenever I'm asleep and I wake up, he's like in his like puffer jacket, long pajama pants, socks on, but he doesn't wear gloves, so his hands are icy cold. He touched me with his icy cold hands to ask me if I wanted food while I was sleeping. Apparently, I jumped awake and started screaming. He was like, oh my god, like, what's wrong with her? But I jumped awake and I was like, oh, you know, like, screaming. And then I just, like, boom, and then, like, went back to sleep, right? I have no recollection of this. Instead, I thought it was, like, a nightmare. And so when I finally woke up, I was like, oh my god, I had a nightmare. And it felt, like, so real. I felt like a ghost, like, touched me. And I was, like, dying. And he was like, oh... No, that was me touching you. And I was like, what? Well, you were the ghost in my nightmare then, right? Okay, but yeah, let's look at the board. Here you got a top. So this one's a frosted PC. There's also a black version, black PC. Here's the back. You can see the LEDs and then you can see the cable. So like I said earlier, it does use the friction fit. So you can just take this out like this. Boop. And it uses the EasyMate Molex. So you can just pop this out. On the PCB, it uses a three pin battery connector and this is so that you can use universal batteries with it if you want. However, the Canon Keys battery that they give you is two pin, right? So there is a red and the black. When using their battery, you have to make sure that the red wire goes in with the positive. You see it says negative, positive, negative. So you have to make sure the red wire goes in with the positive. There's a lot of things I want to say about it. And I guess we'll just say it. So I get what Canon Keys was trying to do. I understand, right? I would say this is more so for someone who already has experience with like keyboards in the sense of like, there's a lot of things that could go wrong and I guess it does kind of feel like a cheap cop-out to be like, well, it was only 80 bucks. But 80 bucks is still 80 bucks. If you're someone who knows how to like make sure you don't break the battery, if you know how to compile and you want to like swap stuff and you're just looking for like a beater board to just like take with you and go, I could see why someone would buy this. I think the biggest selling point for this one is that the PCB is wireless, right? There's a lot of QC things at the moment that you would kind of have to like look past and just be like, well, it was $80. But even if it is just $80, I feel like there's a lot of things that could have been improved. I understand what they were trying to do. They were trying to, you know, do like a cheap $80 keyboard that you can have wireless and then it's, you know, as underglow. But that's the thing, if you're using this for wireless and for underglow, the battery that they give you, this one, only lasts a day. So you can't keep it like wireless forever and you will have to charge it. There's just a lot of things that are adding up right now. The slight warping, which is like, I don't want to say it's a non-issue, but I don't know how much of that is on their end versus like is on our end. Second is ZMK not being ready at the moment. Maybe it is ready. Maybe it is ready to go. They do have a build guide on their website to teach you basically how to use GitHub and compile and flash. So that's good on their end. I do appreciate that that's all ready to go. So let me be clear. The warping is so, so slight. 
It's not really something that I would necessarily dock them for. The warp doesn't affect the keyboard. It's like not noticeable unless you look for it. I would not say like, oh, the warping is like a huge issue. The other thing is that I do appreciate that they did the three prong, but I could see someone potentially like breaking their keyboard <laughs> with the two pin. So that's something that's a little scary. Other than that, this was very easy to build. It's very easy to install. With the O-ring friction, you can always swap this out for something else if you'd like, and you can buy that on Canon Keys. I feel bad. I get what they were trying to do, but as it is right now, I feel like they're going to get more complaints than praises. But if you're someone who's looking for a wireless 60% and you're aware of all the potential issues, then I would say, you know, maybe this is something good for you. Especially if it is a beater board and you don't really care too much about it, then like this would be a good option. But if you're someone brand new in the hobby, I would not buy this. Because there's too much of a barrier at this point when you could just buy something that's already like built and ready to go unless you're someone who really likes to customize it themselves. But if you're like brand new and you have to learn how to compile and you have to make sure you don't like burn your PCB with plugging in the battery incorrectly, I think this would be a little difficult. But yeah, that's my thoughts. I get what they were trying to do, but I don't know if it's quite there yet. If you're a experienced builder, you just want a beater board, then this would be a good fit. But that is the build. Thank you, Canon Keys, for sending it out to me. I want to see CKs do well, so I will give them my feedback and we'll see what happens.